All right, now quickly here. This is a monolinger frisbee. This problem can be, or this application can be found on page 351 of chapter 9 in the text. Um, basically, this is to differentiate between the point particle system and the real system and trying to um, evaluate the energies of those two systems for some object. Um, now, it's understood that um, the total energy of any object is the sum of all of its containing energies. Uh, it's very easy to conceptualize that. However, the point particle system is only um, the kinetic translational energy and the reason for that being is that the point particle system is essentially when you take an object and you crunch it down to only a single point. So therefore, it has no other properties, can't do anything other than be a point and translationally move across some plane. Um, however, the real system um, keeps everything intact and it, it, an object in, in the real system can have anything. It can have translational, it can have rotational, it can have vibrational, uh, thermal, gravity, or any other type of energy that we can imagine or measure or quantify somehow. Alright, now for this frisbee, it's a circular, it's, it's a circle, so we're given that uh, its mass is 140 grams or 0 .14 kilograms and also its translational velocity is 15 meters per second. We're giving nothing else about it. Um, now, translational energy is pretty simple and straightforward. Um, it's very close to momentum. It's actually related to momentum. Um, it's just a simple plug and chug. Um, it's one half times the total mo uh, mass times the velocity of the center of mass. Uh, more on that idea later. Um, so, sorry mass, the total mass times the square of the velocity, uh, just plug the numbers in, we get 15.75 joules for the translational energy of this frisbee. Alright, jump over here to the um, to the real system. Now the only energy we're going to measure is rotational because we have no other means for measuring um, vibrating, uh, vibrational energy, thermal energy, gravity, or, or anything else. So jumping into ro rotational pretty quickly, um, rotational is one half times the moment of inertia times the angular speed squared. Um, this is very similar to what we just did for the translational energy. Um, that's because conceptually the idea is that you, it, it's exactly like translational energy except that it's just applied to a circle. So it's, the formula is going to look very similar. All right, now so moving on down. Moment of inertia is I, angular speed is omega. Um, basically, you can think of these two as um, the summation of the mass times the velocity. More on that concept that I just mentioned. So, when we expand this summation, we get one half times the mass times the velocity squared over and over and over. Um, here, it's important to note that omega is essentially just the period. And when we apply a radius to that period, we get the velocity. And so that's going to be omega r. And we plug that back into the equation. We're going to get um, this right here for our v each time. This omega times the perpendicular radius. Now, we can pull this omega squared out, since it's the same for every time. We can factor it out, because it's the same thing every single time. And then, but we can also pull out the radius squared and the mass because this is a frisbee. Its mass is the same thing throughout the entire thing. Um, its radius is the same no matter which direction, no matter what line you draw from the center of it. You're going to get the same radius. And we also noted that the angular speed is going to be the same because it is of uniform mass and uniform radius. So therefore, angular speed will also be the same thing. So these are going to remain constant for this object. Now to return back to the problem, the only variable that we were given is the mass. So when we plug that in, we get that the rotational energy or the kinetic rotational energy is 0.07 kilograms times the square of omega r. Now to plug that back into the total, we get the total kinetic energy equals the translational kinetic energy plus the rotational kinetic energy which equals 15.75 joules plus 0.07 kilograms times the square of angular speed times the radius, which the units will work out to be joules.